Hi guys, we're the pros of bourbon. I'm Cody. That's Johnny. No, I think you got a little backwards, my friend. I haven't even had a drink yet. So today, we're going to be reviewing the Hibiki Japanese Harmony Whiskey, which is 86 proof. And this one is a 15-year Dewar's. Matured in an oak and sherry cask. For your pleasure. Shall we, John? It's got the instruction manual for how to open it right here, just in case, you know, you need Austin Evans to show you how to open the bottle. Now look at that, it's a thing of beauty. Now uncork that bad beast and let's give her a smell. Squirted a bit. It's squirted. It smells like vermouth. Mm, it does smell like vermouth. Interesting, is it not? Dry vermouth. Ah, uh, yes. The part we all enjoy most. The drinking. The slow-mo pour. Don't. I also brought ice because it said this is better of ice. Just like Mount Fuji. Hmm. Yeah, just yeah, just yeah. Come on, you're we got tip it so we got like. There we go. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that light amber color. Put that big old schnoz in there. What do you mean my nose is bigger? <laughs> it's bigger than mine. Irish prick. <laughs> <laughs> so first up, we're going to be trying out the Hibiki Harmony, which, by the way, Hibiki means resonance and echo and or sound, depending on how you want to read it. So calling it Harmony is almost like a double entendre. <laughs> hibiki, Hibiki, almost. Hibiki, Hibiki. Cheers. Cheers. Going for the taste. Very light and fruity. Yes. Especially when compared to something of the baker's quality that we had last week. Shameless plug. Um, the, uh, it's very similar to the Toki that Centauri also puts out. It's yes. very light bodied for a whiskey. Um, you almost get kind of like a driver move flavor off of it with a little mm -hmm. bit of that berry flavor. Oh, absolutely. Um, I know it's I know it's diff it's it's weird saying it's sweet because it's a strong alcohol but, but it is kind of sweet. It is very sweet especially when you compare it like I said to some other kinds of whiskies that are out there. Yeah, some people refer to bourbon and say the bourbon is really sweet and I guess at the end of the day it is because it's more malty than most of our whiskies. Um but Japanese whiskey has more of that kind of almost like a cherry finish. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, absolutely. Or sakura, as you might say. Sakura. With angst. Sakura. Or <laughs> sakura. <laughs> um, the reasoning for the flavor being as it is, is that the most of the Centauri Company's uh, whiskey is actually aged in what is referred to as umeshu casks. And it's a liqueur that's made using berries in Japan. So when they're done making it, they retire the casks and send it to the Japanese distilleries to pour their whiskey into, and you get sort of that flavor out of it. It's very similar to like if you do a sherry cask, which is scotch. which is funny you say that because Dewar's, especially this one right here, is matured in the first three years in an oak cask and finished actually well for the first twelve years in an oak cask, and then it's finished with the last three years in a sherry cask. Oh, to give it a little bit of a hit. Yes, yeah, so that's that's actually the kind of scotch that I like to drink most is things that have been matured in the both oak and sherry cask. I think it has a nice fruity finish to it. Sherry's berries. Sherry's berries. Who we're not sponsored by. No, we're not. Yeah. But maybe. But maybe. <laughs> um, there's also a really, and full disclosure, we're not going to be just talking about bourbon and whiskey on this show because we're both huge nerds, but. After we get a couple <laughs> drinks in us. We tend to go a little off the rail. Yeah. It makes it a little but more we fun. We will be honing it in more on this video because we want to actually show this one. At least in the beginning. Yes. Um, but while I was doing my research on Hibiki, I also uh, turned up a rather subpar Common Rider live action movie, which is a Japanese uh, henshin type film. 
with superb special effects, as you can only imagine, mm, in Japan. The best. And a very uncomfortable anime clip, which we'll show a little bit of. And that'll be about that. Um, but as far as the whiskey goes, what is your opinion? How do you like it? Would you oh, drink it again? Oh, absolutely. I've had the standard Hibiki many times before, and mm -hmm. I have found a deep appreciation for the Japanese whiskey. I was mm -hmm. very, very turned on to it when I first heard it when I was working at the liquor store. Mm -hmm. Like I said last time we were shooting our show that did not go on the air. But anyways, <laughs> anyways. I heard it, I overheard it from a customer who told me, oh yeah, Japan's making whiskey because they want to get in the whiskey game too. And being a Irish whiskey, Scotch whiskey fan myself, I thought, wow, I got to try that. So I did, loved it, never looked back. Yeah, a couple of years ago, and actually a few years running, uh, Hibiki especially, but Centauri Whiskey Company in general, uh, won many accolades on like national like best distillery and like the world essentially well you don't get 10 points no <laughs> that's so, pretty I mean... that would is arguably perfect um and centauri is also recently in 2011 it was uh acquisitioned by well or it acquisitioned the bean company that of jim beam fame uh they make bakers makers bookers teachers knob creek have you noticed that there's a lot of them that end yeah well, they're Makers, all they're bakers. all named after people from the south, and just like in Japan, people in the south are named after what they did for a living. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> kind of like the Dutch shoemakers and all that. Um, I wish I was I wish I was like Icelandic, so I could have been like Cody Williamson. Williamson, you could be. You could change it. Yeah, but it feels wrong at this point. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so um, so this is technically as American as Jim Beam, perhaps. Um, by by <laughs> owner only. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, in my research, I uncovered a video of a bunch of um, glad, happy Japanese people hanging out at what is referred to as the Hibiki Harmony Sound Bar, and it's literally kind of like one of those undercover uh, Chevy ads they do, where um, they have <laughs> the people come in. They're like, "Oh, would you like a truck with towing capacity? Would you like what if you wanted a truck with like?" room for your family and kids like what if we told you it was all the same truck and they all freak out like it's like that but like the yeah. japanese version so instead so of freaking out more... instead of being like that's a sexy chevy instead they're like oh <laughs> 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 like doing this and all that but i guess Way they have like <laughs> they got like super over designed uh uh whiskey glasses with like microchips on so like as the liquid swishes over the microchips it creates a reaction and working with an app it creates um sort of like uh Context, like a, a textile design uh, in the bar that's like animated and like makes sounds and all that stuff. So like if they blow that's in cool. it, yeah, it's super overproduced, but it's also Japanese, so that's kind of you know that's their thing, par too. for the course. Um, that's that's a little that's a that's a little you know ethically incorrect to say, but hey, you know what, whatever. <laughs> um, but I thought that was kind of cool. And then there's also the infamous uh, Bill Murray scene from Lost in Translation where he's uh, advertising Suntory. And we talked about with doers. Uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery had done an advertisement for them featuring Sean Connery. If I were you. I'd rather try something different. What are you talking about? It's Jewish 12. Enjoy it now. Someday, you'll understand. Sean? It's me. Just remember, some age, others mature. And he also did an advertisement for another Suntory whiskey, Suntory Crest, which is a 12-year-aged whiskey, which um, I'm not sure if it's still available or not, at least not in the States, but I'll definitely be keeping my eyes open for it. 
So. Maybe someone eventually down the line, once we have enough followers, may ship us one. Maybe Sean Connery will wink, be a guest wink. star on our show. That would be wonderful. And then we could ask him why. Why, Daddy, don't you do any more movies? Because he's too mature. Well, or you, know, you know what they say, some things age, others, others mature. mature. Yes. Um, you're going to sniff it all day or are you going to drink it, son? Might I, re might I suggest something better? <laughs> so yeah, so for me, the uh, Japanese Harmony gets a hard 8 on a scale of 10. Um, mostly, the only reason it wouldn't be a perfect 10 for me is because it's not commonly available. Mm. So like, if it's going to be something I'm going to drink a lot of, um, that's constantly available. Well, or have... The kind, yeah, the connections. You know, a friend of mine brought this over from Japan for me. He purchased it in Shinjuku while he was over uh, flying with Delta, the uh, transcontinental flight. He's a pilot, so he brought this for me. But in at least in New York, it's pretty much impossible you get to the, get. You can only thing. just get like the standard Hibiki and all the liquor stores that I've been to. Yeah, or like this Toki stuff is what I see most of. Um, you see Yamazaki sometimes, but it's highly uncommon. Give it a couple of years, and I guarantee you, once the uh, Japanese whiskey makes a bigger uh, splash mm -hmm. in the liquor pool, it will be more widely available. That's well, just kind of how things are. Or once we start we're running out of single malt and bourbon, and they have to get that instead. To I don't think it. they're ever going to run out of single malt scotch. Well, what are you talking about? I don't know. <clears throat> so uh, it would get a perfect 10 if I could walk to my corner store and buy it right now, but I can't. So for lack of availability, it loses two points. But flavor, um, drinkability, it's super duper smooth, um, and I, you know, superb in my opinion. Especially as primarily a bourbon drinker, I really enjoy this a lot. Goes down easy, gives you a little bit of a, a light esprit uh, flavor, like we, like I mentioned with the vermouth. Um, definitely doesn't taste like bourbon, but I'll forgive it. And next, we have this Dewar's 15-year. I'll, I'll let Cody do the honors of opening this one. Oh, yes. Let's get that action shot going. Just rip it off. Yeah, come, it off. come on, camera guy. You, you're seeing what I'm seeing, man? Rip, just rip it off like a bra. Oh, there we go. Drop Feel that. Like we're so <laughs> Squirt so a bit. Here. So this one, I'm going to just kind of go into the what makes scotch scotch spiel now yes scotch is made in scotland that is probably one of what the, <laughs> that is probably one of the biggest determining factors for what makes scotch scotch mm. one of the other ones it makes it, sense it has two main ingredients for when it becomes uh for what it's distilled from or i should say fermented in uh barley and water now, that doesn't mean this, that there aren't other factors that can go into it. You can use other things as well, but primarily it has to be barley and water. Um, when you are switching it to the fermenting process, it is used in EES system and endocramic, no, endocrat, whatever. Anyways, it's a specific system of enzymes that you use to ferment the scotch. Um, it has to have matured in an oak barrel for at least three years, so all scotch is aged at least three years. Um, it has, there are five different areas in Scotland that make scotch, which make up the regions in which scotch comes from. This being a blend comes from a blend of the different areas. But I know offhand four of the five main areas. There are Highland, Lowland, Speyside, Islay, and some other place. <laughs> at, the, at the moment, but the most common that you see if you shop at the same liquor store as I do are the Speysides, some Islays, and a lot of Highlands. Yeah, Highland is probably arguably the most common. Especially oh, absolutely. Especially most of the like, lower-level scotches that you get in America are going to be Highlands. Oh, absolutely. Else. We tried one Islay once, that Bunahaben. Remember mm -hmm. that? That stuff was good. Isn't Islay usually the smoke area of the tea? Yes, the yeah. smoke area. It's because the water comes from the... Um, it's an island yeah. off the coast of Scotland. Right, and then the Speysides are like the really peaty ones. Yep. And then the Highlands are just kind of more... I, I, I describe Highlands as more fruity. Mm. Um, I like them for that reason. Some people think they're uh, cheaper because of that. But anyways, I've never really had any Lowland Scotch before myself. I'd love to try I some if you guys have high. any suggestions for good Lowland Scotch. I am open to listening to them. 
but and then ignoring them completely and doing what he was going to do anyway (laughs) probably because that's just the kind of person i am anyways let's get to it cheers friend cheers my friend wow that's really smooth it is well it's been sitting in a, a cask for 15 years much like the uh habiki very sweet on the uh, front and sides of the tongue, mm-hmm. uh, mostly because it was um, matured, matured, in a sherry cask, which gives it those fruity undertones mm-hmm. that, you know... It probably mellows it out near the end. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. If you drink this, I mean, <laughs> uh, to be completely honest, I drank a three quarters of a bottle of Dewar's, just straight Dewar's, over the weekend when we were flooded, because <laughs> I had nothing else to do when all the roads were closed. Um that's what we should have done for uh, in honor of uh, flooding and tsunami type weather. Japanese, Japanese whiskey. Japanese whiskey. Japanese whiskey. It just makes sense. Sensitive. <laughs> um, so something else to turn up in my research because you were talking about how uh, Scotch is made. Uh, a traditional um, aspect of Scotch whiskey is that they tend to be good sharers. So whereas like bourbon companies don't share anything except for their barrels when they're done making them. Scotch distilleries tend to each make their own specific style of malted uh, whiskey. And then they trade them and they actually blend them together to make like final products. And uh, Japanese whiskey doesn't do that. So, well, typically, let's just, let's say, I wanted to say something real quick. The Japanese have no. a very good tendency of taking something and making it better. Yeah, um, <laughs> that reminds me of something else I want to say. But. <laughs> I think in the case for the uh, like Suntory family agree. whiskey, <laughs> that's definitely something that they have done here. They took something traditionally that was made elsewhere, kind of like the uh, car industry back in the 1970s, I want to say, mm-hmm. uh, where they took the style of making cars, the assembly line, and made it more efficient. Where they stole Michael Keaton's job and made him... Listen, you know, let's, not, let's, not talk <laughs> about, let's not talk about movies that took place a while ago that were also very good. And I let's not talk about the past i watched him in management class it was a good show it was a good movie um but so of japanese i saw a really not so humble video that an australian uh youtube channel put out talking about the suntory whiskey company and it was like basically talking about how japan takes everything and does it better than everybody else and it was like kind of like in a way, I was like, I, I, they kind of have an argument going, but at the same time, it was kind of like, this is a little, you know... Uh, Racy. <laughs> a little, like, you know, maybe it's possible that Japan isn't perfect. Like, maybe it's possible that, like, they need to improve on things. But they were like, yeah. Even, like, supposedly even that carving ice, like, making ice balls and all that stuff is something invented by Japan. And all the bartenders in New Orleans that do all the speakeasy cocktails are just copying their style. That might be true. I, I would know. have to do a little research into it. Maybe um, we could just have people tell us, which would be easier than doing research ourselves. Engaging the crowd. Engaging the crowd. Um, Let's get you guys involved. Yeah. Give us your numbers. Social security numbers. Um, one <laughs> of the other things. Uh, but so with Japanese uh, whiskey, they each specific distillery makes their own style, just like in Scotland. But there's no inter-distillery uh brewing or uh mixing going on like instead it's more like you know uh the yamazaki plant for suntory whiskey makes hibiki and they also make like the yamazaki single malt and all that stuff and they'll blend inside of their own house but there you'll never see like this mixing with like another japanese distillery like they don't like to cross the lines that's how you get beautiful things like this though i know i like to um oh yeah no no bag on blended scotch sometimes because i am a single malt fan myself by Mm -hmm. nature uh but blended scotch there are some perks to it you get to taste um a multitude of flavors and different undertones that Mm -hmm. you wouldn't get mostly with some single malt scotches I would like to see a nice blend with an Isle, something that's got mm-hmm. a nice taste of some smoky thrown in there. I don't really haven't tried any blended scotches that have that so much yet, but um, I'm sure they're out there. They've got to be. 
Think of whiskey as a party, and if you only have one type of person there, it gets kind of boring. So you invite a multitude of different house guests, yeah. and sometimes there's fights, and other times there's a lot of sex. Like in Ireland. This is like sex in a bottle. <laughs> it is like sex in a bottle. It's not like inviting one of the same hot chick to the same party, and then next thing you know, they're all bitching at each other because they're the same person. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Neither would I. Um... But believe it or not, there's actually some Japanese whiskey that's also peated, just like scotch, which is interesting because I think they probably import the peat because I don't think that peat naturally occurs in Japan. I might be wrong. We'll have an asterisk if I am. I'll just say that I'm wrong. Um, this is from Kyoto, uh, Japan. And what part of Scotland is this from? Um, that's a very good question. Product of Scotland. All of it. It is from all of the Scot. Dewar's was established in 1846. Yes, and it was appointed by Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II. Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II. Which they have a new movie coming out about her, by the way. It's called something. <laughs> it's called something. But. Uh, this, however, Suntory Whiskey Company was established in 1923, so in, infinitely newer than even Jim Beam, which is from uh, 1795 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so way older. So Japanese whiskey's only been around for a little while. Uh, scotch has been around significantly longer. But scotch can't be made without bourbon, so bourbon wins. It's been around a lot longer. Um, so Another would, thing about taking something and making it better. Mm, so how would you rate this? Um, this is very easily to come by, so you could probably pick this up at any corner yeah. uh, place. I've even seen it at most bars. Um, I would give it probably a solid seven myself just mm -hmm. because doers is not my favorite i think it's got some good flavor the 15 year definitely does stand out out, mm -hmm. out of any blended scotch that i've well, had maybe we should try the doers 12 of course we should try the doers 12 try something a little better a little different although it'd be it's probably just this before going into the sherry cask no they probably put it in the sherry cask as well but it's just not matured as long in the oak cask mm. so it probably has less of that oaky quality flavor that you would get and um i don't know in my opinion, the older the scotch is, the more clean it is. It's just got more of a uh, more. smooth flavor to oh, it. Oh, for sure. Like if you drink a Johnny Walker Red Label or Black Label, it's super duper rugged. But if you drink like a Blue Label, even though it's all blended, I didn't like, like Blue Label. Wow, well, we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> Never show if we get another one. But yes, so. Plus, I like John Dewar because he's a Dewar. He is a doer. He's not a donter. He's not and a donter. He, he's a go-getter. He's a go-getter, go-getter. <laughs> um, uh, so I would probably give this, I would almost say it's, I think it's more drinkable than this in terms of smoothness. Like, I would give it a nine. Uh, so really? I, don't, I don't drink a lot of scotch that I like. I'm typically a full-on bourbon guy. Um, so for me... <clears throat> to find a scotch that I actually enjoy that I don't have to like not suffer through but like it's 41 bucks so it's very it's very easy yeah to that's a pretty too. good price point too. I mean I like that just because I think that's smoother but yeah, again but this is what's maker's mark cost 39 oh 37 39 bucks yeah, easy, so for where five you bucks it. more you got a 15 year age scotch whiskey like that's but that was just at that one store well okay <laughs> <laughs> but but you yeah. could probably get you know any of these for a lot more depending on where you buy them True. Um, but I would rate it very highly because I don't I don't come by a lot of scotch that I like. But now that I've had it and I enjoy it, I could see adding this to my collection and having it available. Um, so that's my thing. I give it a nine. Uh, slightly better than this, only because of availability. <laughs> well, that about sums up part one. Yeah. Of so this. next we're gonna probably get a little more sauce five. and yeah. start talking about rando shit. Yeah, pretty much. High five for the rando. Oh. Uh.